All right, guys, how's it going? Today we're going to learn about intersections. We've done a lot of stuff about slope intercept form, We've done a lot of graphing of lines. Now we're going to show how those lines interact. First off, who knows what an intersection is? Katie. It's when two lines cross. Two lines cross, exactly. Intersection in a street, intersection in a sidewalk, whatever. It's when two lines cross. So let's do that right here. Let's say we got two lines right here. One right here, one right here. Now let's say this point is 4, 10. This point can be 3, 2. This point up here could be 1, 6. Let's just call this point down here 1, 1. So we've got two points for two different lines. And using these points, we know how to use slope-intercept form to find what the equation of this line is, correct? So what's slope-intercept form one more time? Y equals mx plus b. mx plus b. So y equals mx plus b. Okay, so for first one, let's just solve it right off the bat. Let's solve it for number one. This is line one, this will be line two. So line one, what is the slope of line one? How do we solve this again? Take this y2 minus the y1. Y1. So that's 10 minus 1 over 4 minus 1. Over 4 minus 1, correct. It's going to give us 9 over 3. So that will give us a slope of Positive 3, correct. So upward sloping, it's positive. So now how do we find B? Plug in a coordinate. Plug in a coordinate? Yeah, the two points. So plug in this point into what? X and Y to find B. So first off, we want to rewrite this equation down here, okay? So we want to take Y is equal to, the new slope is 3, 3, times x plus b. Now we take this equation right here, we plug it in for here, so this is 10 is equal to 3 times 4 plus b. So what is this equal? How do we find b from here? Multiply 3 times 4. 12. And then plus b equals 10. Say that again? 10 equals 12 plus b. 10 equals 12 plus b, okay. Subtract 12 from 10. Subtract 12 from here, subtract 12 from here, and that's going to give us? Negative 2. Is equal to B. Perfect. So now we have our two missing components. Now we can write the equation for this line. What will it be? Say it in one term, Katie. Y equals 3X minus 2. Good job. Very nice. Okay, now let's do the same exact one. For number two. So our M, what is Y2 is two minus six. Six over three minus one. Three minus one. It's gonna give us what? Negative four over negative over two. Over two, which is gonna equal to Negative 2. Negative 2. Good job. So now we know our slope is negative 2. We want to plug that back into the y-intercept form. y equals negative 2x plus b. Let's pick a coordinate. You want to use this one right here? So we'll do 2 is equal to negative 2 times 3 plus b. That is what? Negative 6. Negative 6. 2 is equal to negative 6 plus b. Add 6. Add 6 to both sides, we get 8 equal to b. So now what is line number 2's equation? y equals negative 2x plus 8. Plus 8. Very nice. Awesome. Great job. Okay. Now this is where we can start to find the intercept, right here. So now we know that for equation 1, 3x minus 2 equals y. We know that for line number 2, negative 2x plus 8 equals y. 
So if both of these equations are equal to y, can't we set these two equations equal to each other? Yes. Yes, exactly. So now let's do 3x minus 2 equals negative 2x plus 8. Now, who can do the algebra for this one? Solve it out. What do we do with this 2x? Add it to the other side. We've got to get it over here. So we're going to add 2x. So this is 5x minus 2 is equal to 8. What do we do with this 2? Add 2. Add 2 to the other side. 5x is equal to 10. How do we get this x by itself? Divide by 5. Divide by 5. So we get x is equal to? 2. 2. Good job. Now, that is our x-coordinate right here for this midpoint. So this point right here is 2. Now we have to find this y point. How do you think we can solve for that one? Um. How about let's take this 2, this x. Should it, if, if, if this line, when this x, when this line is equal to 2, the x is equal to 2, it's going to have a certain y. Mm -hmm. And it should be the same as that y as when this line is equal to x, is equal to 2, 2, correct? Yes. Okay, awesome. So now let's just take 2, plug it into any one of these equations. Let's plug it into the first one. And what does that give us? y equals 3 times 2 minus 2. 3 times 2 minus 2, which is? 4. 6 minus 2, so that's y is equal to 4. Okay, let's plug it into the next equation. y is equal to negative 2 times 2 plus 8. Negative 2 times 2 is what? Negative 4. Negative 4, negative 4 plus 8 is? 4. 4, so y is equal to 4. We got two of them that are equal and the same, so that means we got a good number. So y is equal to 4, and that right there is our intercept point. 2 to 4. So what does all this mean? What, what does all this equate to? Well, we can actually take these kind of things and turn into real life scenarios to solve for anything. From the time and speed and distance we need to travel to the number of units we need to sell to make money to, to, to uh, uh, comparing temperature to humidity rates. This is used in, in really everyday situations. And um, let's, let's do one of those everyday situations right now. Let's, uh, let's picture a company. Let's make a company. What's a good company name, guys? Apple. Apple. Very. Very creative. Okay. So we are Apple right here. Now, what do we sell? We sell iPods? Okay. So we sell a widget. It's an iPod. Now. You decide to start the company Apple, and you decide that you're going to sell one product, it's going to be an iPod. Now, first off, just if you want to start Apple, just if you want to even be able to build iPods, it's going to cost you 80 bucks right off the bat, okay? Right there, right off the bat, $80. That's for your warehouse rent, that's for all your tools, that's for your employees and your advertising, 80 bucks right there. Now iPod, the, each unit you make, those materials, those plastics, those, those glasses, all the microchips, that's going to cost you $10 to make right there, okay? So this is what we would call your fixed cost. No matter what you're experiencing this cost, F, and this is going to be your variable cost. So if you make one unit, it's going to cost you $10 to make. If you make three units, that's going to be... $30 to make. Okay, cool. So this is your variable. So can we create a cost function using that slope intercept form? Yep. Okay, let's try it. So y is going to be our cost. Now, an x will be the number of iPods we create. So what would our slope be? 10. 10 would be the variable cost per unit to make. So the slope would be 10 x, and what would our y-intercept be? 80. 80, correct. So even if we make zero iPods, we still got to spend $80 just to create the Apple company, just to get the warehouse and all the tools ready. So can we graph this out? Okay, we can. So let's first pick two points. Let's pick x equals zero. So if x equals zero, 
What's y going to equal? 80, exactly. Zero, so that's good. And now let's say if x is equal to, let's say 10, what is y going to equal? 180. Okay, if x is equal to 10, 10 times 10 is 100, 100 plus 80, that's 180. Let's graph this out up here. So this comes up to 0, 80. We got a point right here. And we can go out 10 units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and go up to 180. There we are. Now let's draw this line right here. And this is our cost function. Now, how much you want to sell these iPods for? $20. $20, okay. So we're going to sell them for a price of $20. Now, can we do a slope-intercept form of this cost function, of this revenue function? How much money you're going to get? Okay, so our revenue function would be y is equal to what times x? 20. If x is the number of units, okay, so $20 times the number of units we're going to sell, and what's our B in this case? Zero. Zero, exactly. If we don't sell any units, we're not making any money. So our B is zero. We don't have a B. So now can we graph Y equals 20X? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we go out, let's say, well, if it's zero and zero, that's going to be here at the origin. If it's one, no, let's say if it's five, if we sell five units, how much money are we making? We sell what? Five units. How much money are we making? Hundred. Hundred bucks. So, one, two, three, four, five, up to a hundred. Boom, right here. What about ten units? Two hundred. Two hundred. So, one, two, three, four, five, up to two hundred. Cool. Now let's draw this line. All right, good job. Now, what is this intersection point right here? This point right here is our break-even point, okay? This point right here is the number of units that we have to sell in order to not lose any money and not gain any money. This also gives us the amount of revenue we have that makes sure that we're not losing any money, but we also aren't gaining any money. This is called our break-even point. So, how can we find our break-even point from these two equations? Set them equal to each other, this is the intersection. Absolutely. So, let's set these two equal to each other. We got 10x plus 80 is equal to 20x. Let's solve this out right now. Quickly, come on. Subtract 10. 10x is equal to 80. Divide by 10. Divide by 10. That's 8 equals x. So, 8 units is the number we have to produce and sell in order to break even. And now, how much revenue does that equate to? You have to plug it into the revenue equation. Plug it in back into this revenue equation or this cost equation, doesn't matter, but let's plug it back into the revenue. So 20 times 8 is equal to 160. $160. Good job. So now we can see that this intersection plays a huge part in businesses and runners and athletes and finding out at what point can they beat their benchmark or their break even point. And uh, later in class, we're going to even go beyond this and, and discuss how as this line extends further, let's say to 10, we can actually calculate the profit from the cost function line and the revenue line. We'll take the revenue minus the cost function. We'll talk about that later, uh, probably next Friday. All right, thanks.